It is the Zach Sang Show. Yeah. We got Heather, we got Hi. Dan, yep. and we welcome Quinta Brunson. Woo! Yes. Did I say your name right? Yes, you did. Woo-hoo-hoo! Yes. It's also pronounced like Quinta. Both pronunciations are correct. Got it. Yeah. Quinta Brunson. Yeah. Hello. How are you? I'm good. We were uh, just connecting on Roots before. You are yes. a Philadelphia native. I'm from Philly. You look at Dan and you say what? <laughs> Dan tells me he's from Philly. And I said, you look like you're from Philly. <laughs> I don't get how I look like I'm from Philly, though. I don't know. It's like something about your eyebrows and <laughs> the way your face is. And you look like you, you you just look like you grew up in Philly. You look like you care about things, but you don't care that much. <laughs> you look like you get compared to New York a lot, but yeah. you don't care. You know you're from Philly. I don't know. Do you skateboard? I, I do, yeah. Yeah, you look like you wow. you look like you She's sca- psychic. <laughs> You're hitting it all. She's a witch. <laughs> she just broke you down. Well, I wanted to ask you, from being from Philly, what is another name that you called Sprinkles growing um, up? Oh, Jimmy's. Oh, yeah! Okay. yeah. I Heather hate found that. that out recently, and she's like grilling me on it. She hates it. <laughs> Why do you hate it so much? I, they're Sprinkles. They're, I get it. You know, what, yeah, what is a Jimmy? You know? I understand. Yeah, it's a, it's a Philadelphian thing. Yeah. We don't have an explanation for it. Um, How do you say the, you know, the the candy with the chocolate with the peanut butter inside? What do you call those? I don't know. Like the peanut butter cups? Oh. Yeah, peanut butter cups. I'm Re- sorry. Reese's. Reese's. You said Reese's. Reese's. It's Reese's. Yeah. Oh. It's Reese's Pieces. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cups. It's, they are Reese's Pieces. No, right. 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 I'm really, uh, I'm amazed that you, there was no video on this at BuzzFeed yeah, at all. Right? <laughs> like, Wait, that is really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your My entire life has long. changed. <laughs> this is like when I did go to college and all the kids came from other places and stuff. And they started just tearing apart the way I spoke. They're like, I'm like, can someone pass me the bag? And they're like, the what? <laughs> the bag. <laughs> No, it's bag or whatever. Bog. However, regular people say it. <laughs> yeah, it was but like yeah, started, water, bagel, Vegas. Water, yeah. Mm. I had to, I got water beat out of me by an acting teacher. They were like, "Do not say water in any <laughs> way, shape, or form." Did you <laughs> study acting at Temple? I took like I took two classes there, and the first class I took, that was the teacher that was like, "Never again. You will never make it in this business." And I was like, right. "Wow." So I learned that water was not correct. Water, sorry. Yeah. And post graduation at Temple, you move out to Los Angeles. No, I. Oh, is that true? So, post graduation at Temple, I didn't graduate. I made it up to my junior year at Temple, and then I took a semester off, and I wanted to just try other things. So I went out to Chicago. Oh, cool. At the time, I had a, a a boyfriend who was living in Chicago. He was at Columbia studying music. Mm. I wanted to go to Chicago to study comedy because that's where I found out the second city was, which is a big comedy Iconic. School. Yeah, and I went there and it was a really wonderful experience. And I went back to Chicago a, uh, a couple times. And then, I, I don't know, I started working. I had this idea in my mind that I was going to move to Chicago or LA, or LA. So I just started working at um, Apple, I feel like. Was that around that time? Then my timeline's mixed up. But Apple and still traveling back and forth. Then I came out to LA for like three months, but then went back to Philly. Got it. And so there was like a two-year gap between when I was last at Temple and when I actually moved to LA. Did you finish your study at Second City? Did you go through the, the whole program? I didn't program? go through the whole program, no. I had um, I took one winter intensive course, and I had a teacher there, Shelly Gossman, who is amazing. And she like gave me money out of her pocket to take the run- the writing course. I was poor. I didn't have yeah. money. I used Those- all the money I had to take this course, <laughs> Those literally. Those classes are in- expensive. Yeah, they and are. you know, I'm a college kid. Yeah. Parents aren't helping me because they don't want me to do this anyway. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go study improv, and they're really just like, are you f***ing crazy? <laughs> they are going to make it up? Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And um, so I s- was saving money up to go take that class, and then Shelly gave me a scholarship out of her pocket to take wow. the writing course because she was like, you should focus on this, and you should. So then I started focusing on it. And that I had it in my mind, like that that was what I was going to do. So that was the thread of faith I was working on. That writing course really kind of changed your life. It did. Wow. Yeah. That was the difference between being like, oh, comedy can be a, it could be fun, it could be a hobby, or it could be an actual career. And you don't have to shy away. I think I shied away from it a lot before that. It didn't seem realistic as a career before that. What do you think your specialty is? Is it sketch? Is it writing? Is it stand up? I mean, you kind of, you do a little bit of, I'm not a little bit, but mm-hmm. you, you kind of do everything. 
Um, I'm still trying to figure that out as we go. I'm still trying to figure that out. I think I've learned a lot working in the digital space and, and writing within yeah. the digital space. Um, so I think that's a that's a huge strength that I can complement everything else with. Um, Stand up is amazing because it really is just you up there, and I I enjoy that. Um, Scary. I I like I do like I like it. I like being responsible for the the pass or fail mm-hmm. of that. It's, it's all like, on you. You can't blame anybody else. Right. And I I actually really enjoy that. And then um I don't, you know, I like writing sketch and when I do, it works out so well and I love it, but I also enjoy writing longer form pieces, more traditional like show pieces. Um so I I don't I'm I am trying to figure it out. I'm at a crux in my life. Thanks for putting it on me. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Good job. But I definitely am at a weird point right now. I'm trying to figure out what to put my hands in. Well, what is that point? Because tomorrow you said you have a meeting on Amazon. Yes. So you're going. You do have a relationship with Amazon. Yeah. You, you were part of their Prime Day mm-hmm. video, right? Yes. Yeah. How how deep is this relationship? It's. It's more formal than people, I think it's. I don't sounds. want you to go Facebook official with it, you know? <laughs> No, no, because it is interesting. Like, when I pitched the Prime Day idea, I actually went to Amazon and pitched that idea, and it was a conference room. You know, I went ready, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, oh, pantsuit? No, I didn't do pantsuit, but. Oh, next time. Did I do pantsuit? Oh, she might have. Oh. <laughs> power blazer? I think I did a power jumpsuit. I oh, did a power nice. jumpsuit. Whoa. I did a power jumpsuit. I'll send you guys a picture. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I just remembered, but I was I was very prepared. It was a it was a business work, you know, relationship. And so to me it was like the product I was selling was my ability to make this video, uh, to produce it, to write it, to be the talent, why it would work. So it was a more of a formal business presentation for that. So we have a relationship that is more business and then I bring the the talent and everything else to the table cool but, but I you know position it up front do you credit BuzzFeed with the ability to do everything on set because you really I mean I, I don't know because we didn't work there but mm-hmm. we, we've interviewed a lot of people who have worked there mm-hmm. y- you were kind of forced to do everything right you, you were a one-man wrecking crew yeah and I, I liked it a lot are you are you not at BuzzFeed anymore? I am a development partner, and I am currently, right now in this day, still there, but as a development partner. So it's different. It's not the typical um, nine to six employee relationship. I'm responsible for creating properties, whether they be in house or out of house, um, and kind of like helping the company make money. But for me, it helps me be able to develop shows and kind of get my voice out there. So I sold two shows with BuzzFeed, one to YouTube Red and one to Go90. I've developed relationships with like Amazon and um, Shondaland. We had a, oh, a, oh, a show that was like, you know, a joint um, project that didn't wind up going mainly because of the political climate. But, you know, it's a re- it was a good relationship building hub. And for someone like me who had an unexpected blow up yeah. with videos originally, it was the only place where I could see myself fit to be able to continue growing and not be pushed into one uh, media narrative. And it is a it is a very fair, more fair of a deal, I'm sure. Right? More fair. More fair of a situation with you at BuzzFeed right now. You have freedom to do things. Yeah. It's on your own time. Yes, I'm very blessed. I will say that much. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I know there was a lot of, like, why I left BuzzFeed videos, mm-hmm. that trend. So how? Because a lot of them were saying, like, they had non-competes. They felt held back there. So how were you able to branch out and be able to do both? You know, I think it was um, the, the time in which I came in to the company and I already came into the company quite a big, I was a big resource in property. I had mm-hmm. a big following before I even came there. Instagram um, was it, right? Yeah, Instagram, YouTube was growing. I wasn't even doing YouTube and a, a YouTube page was growing. <laughs> and, you know, I had like the, the internet fame that I was bringing to the table. So I came in as like an entity and they really respected that. I remember the day I told them I wanted to work there. They were like, are you... Sh- what? <laughs> sure. Like, you don't want to go, like, what are you trying to do? But <laughs> at the time, I really needed stability. I needed income. I needed a check every two weeks. You know, I have family. I needed, I also think stability is just good for the mind. I did yes. not want to work freelance. I don't care if it was a $500,000 project. It's just too much for me. It was too much for me at the time. I didn't have any grounding. I was like dead broke, as mm-hmm. in, 
eating bananas for dinner and whatever I could find for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So like I needed stability. Um, and so that's when I came in and worked with them as a resident. Then I came on as an employee, but I was also building properties within the company. So valuable um, cultural pieces, shareable, good, you know, pieces or whatever with with other people there too. So my experience wasn't the same as I think people who made those videos. I will also say that I think at the end of the day, I'd looked at it as a job. If I don't want to be here, I'll just leave. Like I didn't want to be at Apple anymore. I just left. I didn't make a why I left Apple video. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's just a... Because for me, it always seemed like, and they all know this, all of them know this, so I don't care, everyone who made one, and some of them I'm, like, great friends with. I just think it's the most, like, entitled thing in the world. Uh, yeah. Get the f- out. <laughs> Bye. Like, for real. who gives a f- and then, and, and then this becomes your whole thing. Yeah, this is what you become. Yeah. It defines you. It's opportunistic for views, <laughs> immediate views, gratification. Absurd. Yeah. And I, I think, like, for some people, it works. Sure, if you want to be a YouTuber and you want to keep doing that, then fine. But I still find it extremely entitled. Like, mm-hmm. some people need jobs, okay? They don't have the ability to, like... M- <sighs> no one's forcing you to be at BuzzFeed. No! Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's a job. Yeah. It's like you working at, honestly, just Baskin Robbins, and then you being like, I don't like the way that the ice cream is made here. <laughs> I don't like it. And you know what? I don't like my uniform. And I don't like the way that I'm not given $100,000 a year to be a Baskin Robbins worker. (laughs) And I'm leaving. I'm like, bye. (laughs) That would have been a better video. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. And and then hire someone else. Like, it's not. And and that's what they did, right? And now there's a whole new crop of people. But there are a select few like you who have become these development partners. Try Guys, I guess, fall under that umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. Try Guys. I'm Ashley Perez and Kelsey Dara. And everyone's had, like, different experiences. But the focus of most of those people, and I think this is a huge difference, too. None of these people wanted to be famous. They wanted to make work. They wanted resources. That's why I came in and that's why I created the partnership. I needed full control to be able to establish my voice yeah. and then and, and then resources. And that's what I was offered. And I took meetings with other places before, like signing with BuzzFeed. Bigger companies, big, huge companies, nobody was like giving me that. They would be like, no, we, we just want you as an actor. And it's like, well, mm. no. no, I don't w- really want to do that right now. I, I saw it more important to kind of define a voice. Do you remember how you first heard of BuzzFeed? I think Facebook. I just saw a video on Facebook and I was like, oh, great. It, it was so simple and shareable, which I like loved. I was into shareable media um, already clear with, you know, with my videos and then even stuff I'd done in, in the past. I had a show on Facebook called The Rant a long time ago <laughs> before Facebook video was even shareable. You know, you had to like tell someone to go write something. You know, watch this or post your status or something. Yeah, exactly. Like it was like it was the old times, but I had a show that was like me ranting about stuff that was happening on Temple's campus. But then it started to expand because I would have a guest on the show from like Chicago, like my friends in music or like the most popular white guy on campus. And And so that was like the beginning of like shareable media. Instagram didn't exist yet. I know YouTube did, but not in the, the, the comment and share or tag and share, um, or even just the share tab, you know, that wasn't around yet. So, Um, I was like really into that and then I saw a Facebook video and I was like that's tight I could do so much with that and one of my friends Justin Tan he asked me to be in a video like a taste test and I was like yeah (laughs) once again broke as and (laughs) and so it was like 50 I think like $50 I was like hell yeah I need that $50 right now so I'm gonna go in there and do this this taste test and then I like saw it and I saw these people like making whatever they wanted or to me it looked that way or I was like I can actually make whatever I want here and like was like I need to like freedom here yeah freedom and civility the two re- I mean you can't ask for a lot much no. better than that at least to get your to build a base and to start your life and yeah. career mm-hmm. wow so what goes into making a BuzzFeed video uh, what what do you mean so like they, they're pumping out videos all day like yeah. like what exactly goes into like all right here's my idea what's next like how long does it all take yeah what like who's on, working on what I had so many different people and ways to answer that. I guess, like, say I today wanted to make a video about something, I basically would be like, oh, I have this idea. I would kind of go over with myself, 
But at this point, I know if it's going to like do well or not, if it'll be relatable or shareable, mm-hmm. but I'll just like make sure it has some impact or it has a share. And then you basically just put in a production request and our in-house production team get you some cameras set up wherever you need or whatever. And then you shoot the video. <laughs> like, I don't know. Hopefully. Sounds pretty easy. <laughs> Sounds pretty simple. I just didn't know if there was yeah. more complicated than it looks. It's- Sometimes it can be, you know, if you have a way larger idea. Right now, I'm shooting an entire series for face for Facebook's new um, watch for watch, and so that's a little bit more work because mm-hmm. it, it's typical like a show. It needs pre production. We need space. We need all of that stuff. Is that so. through Buzzfeed? So yes, Buzzfeed is the it's kind of it's the production house for that, but it's a show that Facebook will own and it'll be a part of their rollout. For well, because their watch. that became the crossroads, right? Of mm-hmm. like. Facebook is a great place for you to watch video, Mm -hmm. but Facebook doesn't necessarily make money off of the tens and tens and hundreds and hundreds of millions of views and shares Mm -hmm. that BuzzFeed ever gets. So that's why Facebook launched their own television network. Yeah. And and it it, it goes into the future of what visual media is. Yeah. Does it excite you? I'm so excited about it. I love helping people figure it out. It's part of why I sold the show to to YouTube and sold a show to Go90 because I like watching, helping people figure it out. And I think Facebook's odds are really good because they they have the built-in audience. The programming will be free. And a lot of other platforms have been like, come download our app, come all the way out of your way to watch this free content. But Facebook is right there. Most people have a Facebook whether they want one or not. Yes. And, you know, they're scrolling. But they, they have ad breaks too which is nice for me. I'm like, I'm into that because now I can format uh, format around the ad breaks. Mm-hmm. Like a typical television show. Yeah. And the br- ad breaks aren't crazy. No. Mm-hmm. They're like 15 second ad breaks. Yeah. So Facebook is now... They're so going to be a TV network. So you upload like episodes to that? Is that what you guys are saying? Yes, but like not upload. Like Facebook is controlling the output. More like NBC has their shows. Here's their fall lineup. This is how the Facebook thing will go. It's like a channel. Yes. On your TV. And then I think. Oh, it's pro- on the TV. It's not no. on Facebook. No, no, no. It's on Facebook. Oh but she's saying it's like comparing it. To oh. It. <laughs> sorry. I can, so, sorry. So, I'm sorry. That's my bad. It's so not a hard concept. <laughs> well, I didn't know if it was like when you're scrolling through your Facebook, you know, you see videos. I didn't know if you'd, like, that's what it is. Who yeah. knows? They may get to that point. I mean, they may, they may start producing for TV, but I, they want to have be the, the uh, channel themselves. Yeah. They're, it's really exciting. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Is it good for content? Is it a good environment for content creators to create or is it competitive? More competitive I, because there's more opportunity. I think it's great for me. I <laughs> love it. It's the wild, wild west and I can s- kind of make whatever I want to make. It's such a good place to like build my muscles and test my skills as a creator. When you were going to Second City, what did you think? <laughs> like, I'm, I, What did, did I think I was going to do? Yeah. Where, where <laughs> I thought did, I was going to be on SNL. Where, that's what you want to do. That's I'm, what I wanted to do. But you say to do, but you can still do. Sure, but that's not like my goal anymore. And How's also, it more? I don't know what's going on with SNL. Like, with <laughs> I don't know. I have said this to multiple people. I would love to have a talk with like more Michaels and be like, what? What are you? What's going on here? What's the? What are you doing? If, unless Alec Baldwin comes in and what, like, what is the yeah. cast? What's the show look like? What are the new forms of? Of con- like they had that golden age of um a- um Adam uh, uh Adam Sandler nope <laughs> Andy Samberg oh yeah mm-hmm. and you know that's when it's like oh you guys are getting digital like mm-hmm. you're getting you're getting it and every now and then they have like one shareable sketch but I think that I don't know something's a little off and I can't quite put my finger on it and so I I don't know have you thought of a sketch that you would pitch Warren yeah I mean yeah. Plenty of times. All of them. <laughs> yeah, all Every of single them. one. Every sketch I ever come up with. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things that people do online could easily be, you know, there. And normally when they do something that is in that vein, it does really well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they did that one video that went viral, I think like, two years ago or last year. It was like the day everyone figured out that Beyonce was black. It was topical. <laughs> it was yeah, shareable. Yeah, yeah. You know, it hit all the marks of mm-hmm. the new age of media. And then like only like two months ago. Finally, the the scale tipped for more people are watching the internet than TV. Yeah. So, it, but that includes like you know Netflix streaming services, blah blah blah. So I even think it's interesting that the live thing is still happening. And I get it. Saturday Night Live is in all of our hearts, and I love Saturday Night Live. It it motivated me. It helped create me. But 
I don't I wonder how long the live part is going to last in a world that doesn't like to be told when to watch things anymore. I totally agree. With you. you know, I, I think, you know, I think it's going to turn into a consume as you wish. It can originate live. But the mm-hmm. idea of having content for you on demand whenever you need it. Yeah. You can have both and yeah. still win. True. As long as the content's great. And as yes. long as there's a reason to tune yeah. you can offer a reason to tune in, but that same reason for tune in live will be the same reason you want to share the content. Exactly. Well, you the kind of like late night talk shows. Like they're not getting as many people watching live. Their goals are like put them on YouTube and to go viral. Well, See, you- and, and they've got it figured out, mm-hmm. like beyond figured out. Yeah. It's, it's good. And I just think there's so many other com- like you know, the internet is pretty much half com- it's just comedy a mm-hmm. lot of the time. It's, yeah. according to Facebook, it's like that's their third uh, tier of focus is comedy. You know what I mean? It's like food videos, um, kids falling off, of shit, and then <laughs> and then like you know, and then like comedy. So like that's the third tier, and like there are so many people around that do comedy. I think it's also like I don't know. You I have so many thoughts. This is why I would love to sit down like for dinner with Lauren Michaels and be like, what don't I know? Like teach me, and then I would love to Help. input the the twenty seven year old input of what I think could yeah. happen. You know, and I think that's like I mean I, I talk about it all the time. That's when you win, right? You take it's old school meet snood school all the because time, yeah. there is so much knowledge yeah. and so much how to that you will never know that I will never know from those who have done exactly. for decades. Exactly. But there's a new way to formulate that mindset and yeah. that thinking, and it's something that people like reject a lot and. It's like, no, it it's here. Like, you can't just keep rejecting it. You I'll never embrace. forget when my mom told me her mom didn't want a microwave in their house. Her, she thought the microwave was the <laughs> <laughs> And this was in the beginning, and people were like that, though. They were like, huh, none of that in my home. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that thing is up to in there. <laughs> What's it doing? And now there's a microwave in every home, and you, like, event, you cut and, like, continue to resist it. And it... It's, we've had the change from like the, the theater to television. Like it, it will like happen. It is happening. Yeah. It's what happening. It, do you have like a shareable checklist when you're creating content? Do you have like a list of things that you go, okay, it, it meets this criteria, this criteria? Um, I think there is a version of that. I think with my own content, I'm like, what's I think about what's the thing that I can say that people aren't able to say, or what's the thing that I can talk about that I know is on everyone's mind, but maybe they don't know how to formulate it or they're not they they're not their focus is not creating so uh, a good example was like my natural hair versus the perm video I did was this video did really really well um, but I knew it was the conversation every single girl with natural hair Mm -hmm. has when they pass by a perm box in the store no one wants to say it because it's not (laughs) it's not it's not like hair PC to even talk about getting a perm that's like the bad place that's the no no that's the upside down you're not supposed to talk about or go there so sometimes I like to go there and then I did a video recently that I, I like knew would go well I was like this is going to kill and then when I actually saw it done it was like done on green screen I was like oh it's gonna it's gonna kill and it was just like when your boyfriend tells you to relax. Oh, and oh, don't you, get me started. And the idea was like, <laughs> oh, it makes you mad. But it's like, what do you really want to do? You want to like turn up on him and be like, here's the reason why you shouldn't f- with me. Yeah. So I basically like clone out. I do like Jesus. <laughs> like, you know, I clone out into all these different versions of myself and like just dance on him. It's very silly and dumb. But dance on I do. It's great. Very, it's so I do shadow shadow clone Jujitsu if you're a Dragon Ball Z <laughs> Come out <laughs> all these different versions of myself. It's so silly. And I collaborated with like a, a mad decent DJ on that, a friend cool. of mine from back in Philly or whatever, my friend Swizzy. And so not only did that video blow up, but then we got an entire he turned it into a full track. And now it's like Diplo played it at whatever uh, you know, he's playing it in Vegas. That's and amazing. that marshmallow guy played it at uh I don't know his name. Is it Marshmallow? It's Marshmallow. Yeah, yeah. He played it at like the governor's ball. And so now it's like an EDM track. Great. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You never know where one where one Instagram video can end up. You never know. And then that was when I was like, it's going to kill on Twitter. Like, I, I knew it. I was like, it's, it'll do well everywhere else. Twitter's going to be the place where it, it blows up. It, Twitter, based on demos, right? A lot of... Yeah, and just where how people talk in different places. Like, yeah. Twitter's way more, like... They're a little bit more gutter. Even you have the sections, mm-hmm. like, there's black Twitter and stuff like that. <laughs> Facebook is, like... Oh me, oh my! My aunt's on this platform. I can't say whatever I want, but here's a diddly do. It's like a little <laughs> bit more. Um, and then Instagram, Instagram's like just kind of in the middle. 
feel like it's a well, free for all. Okay. Yeah, Instagram, Instagram's hard do whatever sometimes. you want. Well, the posts are the best version of you, right? And, yes. Right, yeah. and then the story could be a little bit more of a peek behind that filter. Yeah, I feel like Facebook people want to put something on their profile that represents them. Like this is me. Instagram is everyone trying to make themselves look better than yes. they actually are, and Twitter is where people go to be their actual selves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> beautifully broken down. Yeah. That's where all the assholes are, <laughs> including me. I love yeah. Twitter. So. so you have what are the shows you have now? You have are Broken adopted the two shows you have out right now? Yeah, Broke is yes, Broke is up on just regular YouTube. Like as it was kind of the beginning stages of it, and then it's as it's available as a full series on YouTube. Red. Up for Adoption is on Verizon's Go90 platform, which is like their own little digital streaming service they started. And then the next show will be um, on Facebook Watch, and that's called Quinta Versus Everything. And that's just me. Uh, once again, like making situations ridiculous. I think it's always you versus whatever is happening to yeah. you in a moment of the day. So it's like kind of based on... Um, is it scripted? It's scripted. It's based on like the, the natural hair versus the perm mm. idea. But <laughs> one of them is like Quinta versus the curb, where I tri trip on a curb and it ruins my day, and so then I confront the curb, and the curb <laughs> winds up telling me about myself. Like you're you're mad at yourself because I reminded you of your mortality and you're not perfect. So it turns into stupid yeah. moments like that, and then one's Quinta versus feminism, where I basically like out myself as a bad feminist while I'm sitting on a feminist panel, like one of those <laughs> panels. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like that very often. I'm like, uh, uh, and then like I don't it's moments like that. One's just. Quinta versus a funeral, like where I have to give a, a speech at a eulogy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. How long is each episode? They're, they range from seven to ten minutes. No, the perfect amount perfect. of time. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and what's great is there's three uh, sketches in each episode. So, like, think of, like, Portlandia, how there's, you know, it's one It's broken episode. down. Yeah, and it's great because they're built around the ad breaks. So How's the money? <laughs> you broke anymore? I'm not broke anymore. Oh, no, but, well, bananas for breakfast when you're feeling healthy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but I like to remind myself. For a long time, I would always go to the same IHOP I would go to. Oh, or no, oh, sorry. Wow. Well, I have to, but Denny's was the thing next to me where all I could afford was a Grand Slam. And sometimes <laughs> I like to still go to that Denny's and just get a Grand Slam to remind myself. Well, like, you know, good. just so I'm aware of where I came from. You could be back here. You better yeah. keep grinding. Yeah. <laughs> True. Or just like... Just remember, don't forget. Like, don't yeah. forget sitting and eating a Grand Slam and why you had to <laughs> eat a Grand Slam. Alone. But you really do have to have those moments. Because I feel like digital celebrity is different than anything else. It's weird. Because you are normal and you need to remain normal because that's how you're connected to your audience. But people still know you. It's very odd. I think it's probably the oddest form of celebrity. Yeah. It's I, the most lack of control form of celebrity there is. Explain it's, that. You 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 just put it really well. You're supposed to be like, you know, down to earth, relatable. You don't have the like mask built up around you of you of There's mystery no or whatever. Posse and you know. Yeah, like or it's, some people have that. You know, there are some people who have that. I think it's really unique being. Okay, so there's a difference between a YouTuber, Logan Paul celebrity. Got it. Yes. And there's a difference between that and there's a difference between someone like me, I think, who creates and writes my work and then also does other things like stand up and and you know, I have these goals that aren't based on fame. But the culture the culture around that world makes people you know, want to put you in that box, but yeah. then they're also confused by putting you in that box because they're like, "Oh, you you write your own stuff and and produce it and direct it and it's not shit. <laughs> well, interesting. Like, what do we do with you? And then it's also weird when, um, you know, it's weird going places and getting, you know, recognized everywhere, but yeah. also like not being on TV or yeah. not being in a, in a film yet because people don't know what to do with their recognizing of you sometimes. There are people that are straight up fans and they, they're lovely, but then there are some people that are like, I, I don't know if I'm... <laughs> allowed to talk to you or not so i'm just gonna pull my phone out very weird and snapchat you <laughs> now i'm gonna walk back and we're gonna pretend you didn't see me and if you did i don't care because you're on the internet and i like your work but you're on the internet so i don't care <laughs> bye and it's That's like life. it's a weird interaction for the most part it's always like nice interactions it's always like sweet kind people who like my work or you know, or like some other version of me, and I, I like that. What do you think about Jake Paul and Logan Paul? Have they, uh, what have they done to the YouTube space? Nothing that wasn't already done. Really? Yeah, no, they're just... 
continuations of 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 those kinds of people and those kinds of people are everywhere maybe on like, steroids perhaps i don't literally know. figuratively <laughs> that logan paul is huge no comment <laughs> no comment you know i met him he was nice to me no, he, that's all i got that's yeah. you know he he was he was nice I, he was nice i we love logan paul we go back many many years yeah. he came on the show when vine wasn't a thing or right. it was just becoming a thing oh interesting yeah he's come on the show yeah we i He's a good guy. Jake, on the other hand, I'm still questioning about. But, you know, you must want to understand the science behind it. You know, I know I know YouTubers and they yeah. talk to me about it. And, you know, just for you guys who don't know, this guy has literally risen through the YouTube ranks like like nobody's ever seen before. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I can't hate on the guy. He's got tons of money and a huge following. So, like, if he's a little annoying, you know. Subscribers by the millions, views by the millions, to the point where some people <laughs> think it's fake. Really? Yeah. You know, when I tell you, I really don't know that much about those kids other than, like, what I see and when, what I read, and which are not good things. <laughs> They're not. Like, I did retweet something, and it was a bunch of kids standing outside of Jake Paul's house, and I was like, that, mm, this is just, just bad. It's disgusting. You know, they are being really disrespectful to adults, so it's breeding, like, a culture that's probably not healthy for the future generation, and it's probably breeding more toxic masculinity which is that you know i hate even saying words like that now but it's true you know yeah. but those kind of people they always exist you always have the ignorant you always have the ill-hearted and you always have the people who like do it for the love and actually are trying to do something i think in this industry and i don't know i don't know too much about them and i, I haven't like watched too much enough of their stuff or anything like yeah that. i typically watch traditional Media still. Do you, have you not cut the cord? No. You still have cable. Do I have cable? No, I don't okay. have cable. But like, I have Netflix and Hulu. I have what I what I want to watch. That's our traditional media now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's our. Yeah, true. <laughs> that, true. But I still watch like Thirty Rock in the Office, and then I check out mm -hmm. the new sh the new shows on like Netflix and everything. I don't really watch YouTube except for Honest Trailers. That's the only thing I watch. So <laughs> <they're> funny. <laughs> it's like the only thing that I religiously like check in for. What is our end goal here? Do you, you have your, your, your sights set on something? Um, well, you know what? I'm really interested in just growing and seeing what can happen. And that sounds corny, but that's the point I'm at now. Like the opportunities that are coming in are some of them are, you know, traditional media opportunities. That would be fun to do. Um, film would be fun to do. I would like to keep writing and keep creating. I had dinner with a friend last night, Misha Green, who is she did the show Underground on WGN. And now she's working on the, the new Jordan uh Peel project with um, J.J. Abrams. Wow. I cannot remember the name of this movie. It's so crazy, but it's a new movie. And, you know, she was, like, asking me these questions. She's like, take your opportunities because I'm afraid of going into different realms and being like, oh, I don't want to be stuck here as this person or as that person. And she's like, take these opportunities. Like, you have them. You've created your voice and defined yourself. Take opportunities. So I'm taking meetings and with the big wigs and cool. meeting people and I'm like writing a book right now, so oh, that'll cool. be cool. And mm -hmm. then, um, like I did just for laughs in their creator category, but while I was down there, I did a bunch of stand up, and that brought a ton of different opportunities, which was amazing. And like now, you know, taking meetings with like places like Netflix. And That's Hulu crazy. And stuff. I mean, yeah. in the best way. Yeah. You know, you took an. I, and I don't want to. I don't want to say that BuzzFeed gave you an opportunity because you came in with your your, mm -hmm. your own audience and mm -hmm. your own platform already. But the merging of the two really obviously didn't do any harm. No. And why why can you get it to this point and continue to get it right? And why are some in that BuzzFeed realm not getting it right? I think everyone's just on their own path, I think. Uh, so corny, but I do. I think people are figuring out what they want to do. And, it, like, this doesn't have to be people's end goals. You know, a lot of people there want to be DPs. They want to yeah. be, uh, they want to go into tr traditional, but just not as interns. They want to go in with a huge, you know, um, a, a huge resume, which yeah. BuzzFeed is. Like, a lot of people get to work on one project, like, every two months. Lit there, you were working on maybe, like, five projects a week, stacking it up. And now, like, people have left, two of my friends, Zach and Justin, uh, they left. And pretty much their de department got cut, and they had the option to go into another department and get paid more. And they were like, you know what? No, we, we don't want to do unscripted. We want to—we just would rather go. 
But he said, okay, cool, great. Loved working with you guys. You guys are amazing. Please come back anytime you want. Now they can take every single meeting in the world, and they are, and it's because of, like, what they they built while built they were there, there yeah. as writers, directors, um, cameramen. Uh, dir- so you, they've built up this crazy resume. So well, I think everyone has different paths. We didn't touch on the streamies yet. You're up for acting in a comedy. Yes. How are you feeling about that? I'm excited. I don't think I'm going to win. There's some guy in there or all the kitty, <laughs> kitty titty boppers were all <laughs> to him. <laughs> Who is it? Uh, there's Arden Rose, Jason Nash, Jeremy Jason Shada. Nash. That one. The older guy. I just seen FML the movie. That's what he's That's up him. for. I feel but, so old. I don't know any of them. He's older than us. <laughs> oh, he's always doing stuff with uh, Josh uh, from Drake and Josh. Josh, what's his last Josh name? Josh Peck. Peck, yes, Peck, exactly. yes, that guy. See, I'm exactly. totally in, Wait, is in it on it. Jason? Him. Oh, Jason. Um, this, this guy is 44. Yes, yeah. that's what. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. him. Yeah, he's older. That's, that's the, the guy. Da- da- David Dobrik guy. He's like a. Uh, you don't know. Y'all really don't understand how I do. <laughs> I watch Honest Trailers. I know Honest Trailers. I know Hannah Hart because she's a friend. And I know Liza Koshy because I think that little girl's funny. And yep. that's like about it. Okay. I'm not kidding. So Liza Koshy is dating this guy, David Dobrik. Okay. Jason is David Dobrik's friend in all the vlogs. And then they do some stuff together. He was weird. I was at a party like two weeks ago and he brought his kids. That guy. Like, like he was, Yeah. Like, if was I drinking do recall and, his- and I was drunk, he... I, <laughs> So I don't know. Okay, how, what kind of kids does he have? What are we talking? They're, grown? No, they're young. They're like they're, children. Kids? Yeah, they're like ten. Babies? Ten? No, no. Like maybe like between oh, well, seven, seven I and ten. I think I saw him at VidCon, but I and I, I think I have no idea. I don't know. I couldn't figure out the dynamic of what was happening. But the so kids love him. Yes. In this weird, like I guess. Dad yeah, that's what I'm saying. When every, all the kids started retweeting it, they're like. Uh, you know, what is this? Jason, you know, the kids were going ham, <laughs> going ham, ham, ham. And I was like, oh, I'm losing this, but I'm okay. It's an honor to be nominated. I'm so excited. And that's fun. I haven't been like publicly nominated for anything yet. So, and I'm happy that it's for an actress. That's something I'm trying to do way more of like in the future. So in other people's projects. Starts with a streamy, then it's an Emmy, then it's an Oscar. <laughs> I you know? sure hope so. Maybe it's a Tony. <laughs> yes, I sure hope. Oh, and Mamrie's in there, I think. And I, I, yes, I do. she is. I love Mamrie. I think she's insanely talented. But what, that's like someone I met through Hannah and like think she's one of the most talented people. She's so funny to me. I think she's actually really... Mm-hmm. And and she, but that's another thing. She's like trained, like you know. She, I think she did Groundlings and like all these other. She trained professionally in comedy, and I think it really shows. Would you? I mean, you don't need. You have training every day, right? Mm-hmm. So there no be no reason to ever go back to Second City. Um, who knows? I look at it the same way I look at college. Like I'm like, ah, who knows? Maybe I want to take a business course one day and go back to college and and do that right now i would love for temple to give me a degree for free yeah right you know <laughs> and it's funny too because they call they like they'll they'll like or they they'll put my name on a pan or my face on a pamphlet or something <laughs> i'm like you don't give me a degree and stop yeah, playing because right. the reason i didn't go back was because they got rid of my major and like 15 to 20 of my credits were gone whoa Damn. so i was pissed you know i was just like oh, and now <laughs> Now they're putting your face in their pamphlets. Do you have your manager reach out and go, Temple, you should give this? He went to Temple, too. And, like, no, we just joke about it all the time. Whenever I speak at a college, I'm like, let's see if I can get a degree out of them, Adam. Yeah, right. like, I'd like a UPenn degree. Why not? Like, let's do it. But Temple, I want it from because I just feel like a certain, it's it's a revenge thing. I want a degree from And you went there for three years. Yeah, I'm, like, pissed. It's yeah. really irritating. And don't put my face on your pamphlet. Don't call me. Don't ask me to come speak. Are you crazy? Oh. Give me a degree. Or at least give me a degree. You know? Put I it on your rider. <laughs> I need cans I'm, of pe- uh, Pellegrino, a, a, degree. a degree, um I red mean, M&Ms. They would want it. Look, Temple has Bill Cosby done. Yeah, they, right? You know, they have like Patti LaBelle. You might want to get me in there and give me a degree and like let me do so. I don't plan on doing any Bill Cosby type like things. So I think I'm good. They would do better to have me in that department. Also, they, they were like... You know, they'll call and, like, ask me to come and speak or whatever. And I'm like, N- no. And they think they think I graduated. Uh, what? Like, someone from the Alumni Association called me before. And I was like, you know I didn't graduate, right? The girl was like, oh, uh, one second. And she went off. <laughs> and two minutes later, she's like, we did not know yet. We didn't know that. And we thought you graduated. Um, Okay, so well, it was good talking to you. I love your work. I was like, y'all better stop playing. <laughs> and at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm probably the most successful person from my class. No shade on any of my 
some of them are you know are still my friends we're friends but i'm pretty sure i'm the most successful person does that feel good yes especially now i have graduated it feels uh it feels great was it hard not going i mean I, you told me about the credit thing so i guess it wasn't that hard of a decision not to go back no <laughs> no no my mom really wants me to get a degree so that's the only reason that i want to go back but does she still bring it up all the time. Oh, nothing matters to her. <laughs> I sent her the Hollywood Reporter article that I was just in or whatever. I sent her the Forbes. I was on the Forbes. 30, 30 under 30. 30. Oh, I nice. send that to her. I mean, she's like, great. So I would love to see you walk across the stage. And I'm like, mom. I'm like, <laughs> don't mom, do good. That's what's most important. And, and it's hard to convince her. Like, it, even with the, like, the 30, 30 thing, every news article, whatever that comes out, she still, like, has in the back of her mind, like, are you secretly stripping? How do you make money from these videos? <laughs> How? So she's just conflicted. Appreciate you, Quinta Brunson. Your mom thinks you're a stripper. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so, so funny. It's oh, hilarious. moms. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank yeah. you. This was great, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we like your uh, Sephora bag. Your Sephora purse. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I have a Sephora bag, and uh, it's because I don't have a makeup case, because I'm not good at makeup. I'm just now getting into it, thanks to Rihanna. And Fenty. What, Rihanna? Or, she has a new makeup line, and it actually looks good on me, so I'm wearing <laughs> there it. There you go. So do you, do you have to teach yourself how to apply the makeup? Yes, and, and then my, all my people at work are helping me. Not, <laughs> I'm really not good with it. <laughs> They're going to teach you, you're going to take notes, and then you, you'll be able to reapply. You're laughing about it, but that is what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> That's actually what's happening. <laughs> Quinta Brunson, you guys got to check out the streamies. Um, yeah, it's uh, when is it? It's soon, it's right? The 26th. Yeah, next Tuesday. Next, next Tuesday. Hey, aren't you going? I think so. You, you should know <laughs> nah. when it is. That's how I am. I, I know because I, I happen to have to look at a calendar today to see if I would be here or not. Day by day, yeah. it's always different. Exactly. I don't exactly. know. That's how I operate. Hey, Quinta Brunson, thank you so much for hanging thank out with us. Thank you. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you.